There are many definitions as to what computational thinking could be. Google state that computational thinking involves a set of problem-solving skills and techniques that software engineers use to write programs that underlie the computer applications. They break the process of computational thinking into four components. These consist of decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithms. Decomposition stage refers to the breakdown of parts. For example, if we wanted to make a lemonade, we would have to break the process down and consider each component within our lemonade. Pattern recognition refers to the ability to recognize patterns within a process. Such as solving a math problem, we look for patterns within the problem to identify how to move towards solving it. Abstraction. This refers to the part within the process that has been simplified. For example, within the math problem, we may use generalizations to represent parts within an equation or problem. Algorithm refers to the step-by-step -step process. Referring back to our lemonade example for decomposition, this would be the recipe that others can follow to recreate the lemonade. The National Curriculum 2014 states that combining computational thinking with creativity enables children to understand our ever-changing world. The processes embedded within computational thinking could effectively prepare children to understand the codes involved in making a computer behave in a particular way, consequently developing the confidence and skills they need to create their own codes. The examples of components within computational thinking demonstrate how these skills can be taught both with and without computers. However, there are differing opinions on the effectiveness of delivering computational thinking within the classroom. The NRC questioned the lack of clear progression within the K-12 computational education community. In addition, they suggested that the abstract concepts of computing could not be realistically introduced within primary years as the nature of computing involves highly abstract symbolic components. This argument highlights an interesting point. However, is maths not open to a similar dispute? Wolfram suggests that critical reform is needed in math as we must prepare children for this digital generation. In order to do so, the math curriculum should be based on computation and computers, and through technology, children are more engaged and motivated. Wolfram describes developing high-level math as integral for the future, and believes that mathematics through computing will be the mainstream subject of the future. Although Wolfram puts forward a valid point, we must appreciate that computational thinking is not restricted to computing. Wing recognises the educational benefits of computational thinking and relates to them as transferable to any area as they enhance and reinforce intellectual skills. Computational thinking is a problem-solving methodology that can be automated, transferred and applied across subjects. I believe that computational thinking should be embedded across the curriculum within all aspects of lesson planning. This will allow children to integrate computational vocabulary into their everyday language and lead to them developing a much deeper understanding of what type of thinking is needed in order to get a computer or machine to do what you want it to do. In order for our next generation to engineer technology, the curricula that children engage with must prepare them with the skills they need rather than encourage them to merely consume technology. As future teachers, we must equip children with computational thinking skills thus enabling them to feel inspired and recognise their potential as future tool builders rather than simply tool users.